You also alluded to a student, a former student at Smith College that discussed how she had changed her whole demeanor of expression based on understanding that so much language was offensive, she could hardly speak anymore. So I'd like to read the, the words of this, of this student. I mean, she really captured it perfectly. She's describing Smith, but this is what I hear from students all over the place. She says, uh, uh, and this was written in, I think, 2014 or 2015. It was just early in this, in this wave of change. During my first days at Smith, I witnessed countless conversations that consisted of one person telling the other that their opinion was wrong. The word offensive was almost always included in the reasoning. Within a few short weeks, members of my freshman class had quickly assimilated to this new way of non-thinking. I began to voice my opinion less often to avoid being berated and judged by a community that claims to represent the free expression of ideas. I learned, along with every other student, to walk on eggshells for fear that I may say something offensive. That is the social norm here. I'll just share very briefly a couple of other stories because this is, this is the main problem. Students are afraid of, of speaking openly because other students might call them out and, and shame them. Professors like me are afraid of teaching normally because if we offend anyone in the room, anyone in the room of 300 people, there's a number that they can call. It's in every bathroom here at NYU. There's a number they can call to report me if they feel offended. Um, so uh, other examples, uh, three students were walking along at Claremont Mechanic College, or one of the Claremont Colleges in Los Angeles, and one said, oh, I'm starving. And one of her friends called her out for that. And she said, that's offensive, because there are people who are really starving. So it's, it's, it's an orientation to looking for offense, because if you call someone else out, you get the credit for being sensitive to the needs of oppressed people. You get to feel superior. You get, it's, it's not about your internal feeling. This is the thing. It's about gaining, gaining, gaining currency in, an, in a prestige economy. This is caused by social media, or rather, human nature has always been prone to this. Social media suddenly gave us all an attitude in which if you, if you call someone out publicly, your call out gets likes, and that, that's really good. So it's not about how you feel inside. It's about what does it take to gain prestige in an economy of outrage.